Today on the table of the Ontario M9 Bayonet and the K-Bar Dog's Head. I'm not really, I can't give you an accurate price split because I can't get this through any distributors that I have so far. I don't actually know what the start cost is. I mean, retail, this thing's all over the place and so is this. Anyway, uh, you're looking at 420 stainless steel for the blade on the Ontario, Ontario Bayonet. You're looking at 1095 on the K-Bar. You're looking at a hardness somewhere in between 53 and 57 on the bayonet. And you're looking at somewhere between 56 and 58 on the K-Bar. The overall look of the knives, they both look sick. I mean, they're just awesome. Now the sheaths, the K-Bar, it's... It's not poor quality, but it's not what I remember them being. Maybe I'm missing something on this, but I could have sworn the sheaths used to be a lot higher quality on the K-Bar. Like even the knife just going in, it doesn't fit quite right. I'm sure as it wears and stuff, it'll fit a little bit better. And then it's got some sort of design on it. I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be. <laughs> The design, I think it might actually be a dick. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the sheath on the Ontario Bayonet fits great. Locks up nice. It's got a quick release latch. So that's kind of cool. And this does also have a wire cutting capability. And I have cut quite a bit of cable with it. Works great. You also have a saw back on the Ontario, so say you had to like saw through something, you could actually do that on this. If you are looking to buy one of these as just a straight up knife, this is not the one to pick unless you have a belt sander. I spent the better part of two weeks on a whetstone with this, trying to get an edge on it because the profile, instead of you know being like a knife, it's like this. It's not meant to be sharp. You just got a flat side and then it's kind of covered like that. Like you couldn't do any sort of real work with that. Side note, a few people had commented, hey, bayonets are not supposed to be sharp. They're bayonets. Stop sharpening your bayonets. So I thought I would throw a little bit of logic out there. Why exactly I would sharpen my bayonet. And that's for a very good reason. I've been trying to avoid this topic because it's a little bit too real. But there are two types of knives that I use anyway. There's your field knife and your combat knife. Your field knife is for like cleaning animals, uh, cutting wire, cutting rope, stuff like that. Your combat knife is reserved for flesh. Flesh only. That's all it does. Now I kind of think my dad understood this principle because every year before deer hunting, whether or not he had got a deer last year, which he almost always got a deer, just irritating. But uh, every year he would resharpen his knife, even if it wasn't dull. And he would change the profile more like a sword. So instead of like this, you got the profile on the blade, and then it also comes up at another profile. There's actually two different profiles on that. He would take that away and just use a single profile. So he would change it from like a 30 degree angle to like a 10 or a 15. Now there are advantages and disadvantages to changing the angle. You go with a hard angle like this, like a 10 or 15 degree angle, you can get the blade much sharper. Don't get me wrong, you can still get these sharp, but not as sharp as if you apply more angle on it. But you lose durability. So that's why they use two different edges on this because if they actually used an angle that this blade should have on there, People will be like, oh, it's just going dull right away. A combat knife needs to have a thirsty blade. What I mean by that is this should not be used for anything else except for strictly combat. So if I was carrying this bayonet, there would be two reasons. One, because I'm hunting with it and it's got enough mass on the blade to where if I were to stab it in the hip bone, I can get in deep enough to break it so the legs fall apart so it makes the deer easier to clean. The second reason I would be carrying this knife, or bayonet, would be in a total societal collapse. 
Pick your flavor. I don't care. The dollar collapses. The grid goes down. We get EMP'd. We're under attack. The point is, if I'm going to carry this much weight on me, which will be a little over a pound, this needs to double up as a field knife. Otherwise, I just don't have room for it because I'm already going to have a combat knife. The idea with this, if you draw this, it needs to be hungry enough and thirsty enough so anything that comes in range, you take it. Ideally, you know, like say a fingertip comes in range, you take the fingertip. You're not trying to go at the center mass because otherwise you become inside their range and they can take your weapon away. As soon as something comes out, you take it. So, <laughs> oh, that's way too dark of a topic. So, you want to keep your blade thirsty, and hopefully you'll never have to use it, but that would be the only purpose you would use it for. This probably wouldn't be my field knife. I mean, yeah, it's got advantages because I can put it on the end of my weapon and use it to, like, poke into things, and the blade's got enough mass where I could do some minor hacking with it. But I'd probably have, like, a foldable knife that I use for everything, and this would have, like, the same per purpose as, like, a self-defense pistol. Now, if the other person's got a knife, you run away. If you absolutely cannot run away with a little bit of... A lot of bit of luck and a thirsty enough blade, maybe you can just get away with some minor injuries. But two people in a knife fight, both parties are going to lose. That's just the way it is. This levels the playing field. This is arguably the best weapon you can possibly have within 21 feet. So that's why I sharpen the bayonet. Otherwise, I just don't have room for it. This would be completely useless to me. I would not have a tool that I could just put on the end of my gun. This would also have to double up as a field knife. And like I said, I hunt with it. It's got a stainless steel blade, so it's not going to rust very easy. And it's heavy enough to where when I go into the hip bone, I have enough force behind it to get in good and deep so I can break it and make it easy to clean. It should also be noted... Because I paid for this with my own money and I spent the better part of two weeks working on this with a whetstone, there's a certain amount of pride in this item. So it's kind of like uh, when you build a car, like if it has a problem and you build it yourself, you're more likely to overlook it. So this review is definitely going to be biased. I mean, there's no way of getting around it no matter what I'd say or what I'd promise. Just because I have so much work into this, and financially invested in it, I'm going to be more likely to look at the positives of this knife and ignore the negatives. So that should be noted. I never said that in any of my other videos because I thought it was a given. I've recently come to some new information that no, it's not. Most people think if you buy your own stuff that you're more likely to get an unbiased review. So I'm actually going to do a video explaining that point. So if you're somebody that watches all my videos, I'm sorry, you're going to have to hear this twice. But anyway, so that should be noted between these two knives and any other video I've ever made where that's my own personal equipment. You gotta factor in the pride factor, especially like on the Ditch Witch. That shotgun was a pile of crap when I first got it. But because it was mine and what it represented, I was able to look past that stuff and look at it as like a whole picture. Like, if it was just a gun on the table I was reviewing against another gun, it would never win any sort of comparisons. So anyway, that needs to be noted. Uh, the K-Bar, you do get a blood groove, which makes the blade look a little cooler. I mean, obviously it's not as cool as the bayonet, because, I mean, this is a bayonet. It's freaking awesome. From what I understand, the point of these... A bunch of people are saying that it's something to do with the structure, but I don't see how putting a radius in the center of it and removing material would help with the structure factor. But radiuses do have a structure a structure factor capability about them. So that may be the case, but from what I understand, this is primarily because we're made out of mostly water. You stab this into something, you'll get a vacuum seal on it. This is supposed to be so you only have to pull the blade to right here, and then this little groove will help break the vacuum seal so you can withdraw your knife. The bayonet does not have that, but ideally if you were to stab something with this, it should be attached to a firearm so you have the firearm for leverage. Makes it a little bit easier to pull it out. This does have a nice back on the handguard, so even if 
like let's say you stuck this into something and blood ran down and it got all slippery, your hand does have something to butt up against. So you can pull on it a little bit more. This handguard is a bit big for me or hand grip or whatever you want to call it, handle. But I mean, that's fine because it gives you a little bit more leverage. So that is pretty cool. Uh, the blade is a lot thinner on the K-Bar, which makes this uh, almost a quarter of a pound lighter than the Ontario Bayonet. Now the whole package deal, the Ontario Bayonet is gonna be much heavier because this is a hard plastic case. You got all the metal on it for the wire cutting capabilities. You got your bayonet ring, your locking assembly. This is just a piece of leather, very light, very usable. Um, will this fit on your gun? This will fit on all your Mossberg 590s. Now, if you have a carbine gas system, like for example, this one, it comes up short and it's gonna make a bunch of noise that moves around a lot. You want it to be right here. What that would require, and I have seen them for sale, is a seven inch handle to fit on your carbine 16 inch barrels or uh, 18 inch or an 18 inch barrel with a mid length gas system. Now this will snap right on to a 16 inch barrel with a mid length gas system. A carbine, a carbine length gas system with a 14 inch barrel or a 20 inch barrel with a rifle length gas system. It will also go on your shotgun. Some of the other bayonets still have too much handle. Like it gets wide, almost kind of, almost kind of like this one. So if you're looking for one for your shotgun, you're gonna wanna make sure it's the M9 with the skinnier handle. Always it's not gonna fit in between the magazine tube because the space is real tight and you'd have to like grind off some of the handle or something. So that is something to be aware of. Now I cannot take this one apart, the K-Bar, because the pin comes in and then there's no backside to push it through. So you'd have to like drill it and punch it out. So I don't know exactly how thin because this is a full tang but there's different types of full tangs you got your full tang where it's basically the size of the hand the handle and it goes all the way back and then they'll just have some sort of material wrapped around it very strong knife but it will throw off the balance of the knife and it'll make the knife a lot heavier is that a positive or a negative i don't know you be the judge so right now the piece of metal that goes through here is this thick is this thickness but it is one solid piece of metal from what I can find I'm still searching for a picture on the internet with one taken apart because some of your full tangs they'll have almost like kind of like this one but they'll have the blade come in and then they'll have a cut in the center it'll be like a C and then the bar that goes to the handle will go like that and then they'll just put a weld at the top weld at the bottom or even just weld it all the way around but that is a structural failure point this isn't supposed to have that because it's supposed to be one solid piece of metal from front to back. Now your bayonet, this one, it actually comes apart. So your blade comes through, you got a piece of metal, roughly about the same thickness of this actually. And then that piece of metal is threaded and then you have a bar that goes over the thread and it comes all the way through like that and you can take this apart. I would like to see a solid piece of metal, but you know, I get why they did that because this needs to come apart. And if they were to have a solid piece of metal right here with a screw in there, this would be a massive weak point and the primary use of this is a bayonet anyway. So you don't want the weak point there. When it's strapped on your gun, if it's actually the right size, uh, actually, let me pull it up like this. You're gonna get a whole bunch of strength from it being held like this. So most of your force is gonna come right here and this is gonna absorb it, your ring. But as an actual knife, if you were to do any serious sideways prying on this, you're very liable to snap it right there. Or where you got the hole right there, snap it right there. But this is still a pretty big piece of metal. So, I mean, you'd have to really pry on it. Chopping, you know, it's kind of hit or miss. I don't know how well it would do. As far as like for using it as a field knife for like cleaning deer and that, it works okay. You don't get a really comfortable spot to hit your hand on to drive it in the rear hip bone to snap that to spread the legs but it's fine because you can just stab it in and then your back and forth pressure because of the way this metal is shaped and it's longer than it is wide you can apply quite a bit of prying force going back and forth just not side to side so you can stab it into that bone and break through it like that same with the k-bar because this is a thinner piece of metal if you were to do any side to side you could bend this and or snap it and this is a much thinner piece of metal. 
So anyways, which one would I buy? Side note, that Smith & Wesson I was talking about, that actually sold right away, and because I wasn't happy with the material and it was gonna eventually be a Patreon giveaway anyway, I winded up not replacing that and replacing it with this. Now, my Patreons are gonna have to leave in the comments below if they want me to do this as a giveaway, or as I was thinking about this. It's a folded steel sword. It's the shorter one. But anyway, let me know in the comments. If you are looking to double it up as a bayonet, obviously this one, because it's a bayonet. Now, as a real knife, this isn't gonna come sharp. If you don't own a belt sander, don't buy this expecting to use it as a knife because the total edge needs to be reprofiled. This can be used right out of the box as a good knife, and it is a quality knife. I mean, aside from I'm not really that hot on the sheath, and they don't look as good as I remember them using. I'd rather buy an older one from World War II out off of eBay or something. But anyway, it is good to go as a knife. You could strap this too and make it sharp enough to shave with. Right now... It is cutting hairs off my arms, but not really consistently. So, since I already own this, this would probably be the actual one I'd pick because I like the whole capability of being able to put it on a firearm. But if I didn't own this, or I didn't have a firearm that could take a bayonet, oh, without a doubt, I would go towards the K-Bar. But anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.